Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. I can't sing, but hello, surprise. Surprise, it's another seat hall. Hi. <clears throat> it's another seat hall. Mm -hmm. I believe we talked about uh, addiction in the last video. We've already covered that topic. So, today's seat hall is botanical interest. Super excited about it. So, what happened was, um, I got a text from Kevin, okay, y'all know Kevin over at Epic Gardening. I got a text from Kevin that they were having a um, Black Friday sale on their seeds. And I think it was just like 20% off. Like it wasn't like a deep discount. It wasn't like, you know, a fire sale or anything. But it got me over there. Marketing worked. And I do believe this one might have been a little bit expensive. I think it was more than $38. Anyway, I'm open. I'm op opening it um so i'm gonna try not to have like a big old long intro oh my gosh oh my gosh what i do believe i was drinking okay just like i am right now <laughs> it's night night time okay it's not nine in the morning um wow well, I got a, I got a few things. I'm going to do my seed haul. And then I'm going to try to get some, um, my dwarf tomatoes going. Okay. Because I'm supposed to be joining this hashtag WIG2023. Winter Indoor Growing 2023. Um, Mike and GT, I'm trying to get in there. I'm trying to get in the game. Okay. I just been distracted by seed hauls also i have two videos filmed out in the garden but i'm going to release this one first just so i can buy myself some time to get those edited so please enjoy <laughs> this seed haul until i can get another uh potage garden video out to you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh okay not well okay so i bought 21 packets and it was 49 dollars and 27 cents so that's not horrible I saved $12.32. Original price would have been $61.59. For those of you interested in the math, that's what that is. $4.98. Did I order two of something? I ordered two of something. I ordered two of two somethings. I hate when I do that. Ding dang it. And I do that with botanical interest quite often, actually, I do. Um, let's see, my most expensive pack, I believe, was $4.29. And I did that with two separate. It's birthday money. I'm just blaming it on birthday money. I've lost all sense of frugality. All sense of frugality. Just gone. All right, let's do this. I said it wasn't going to be a long intro. And there I go. Here we go. I don't know why I say here. Here we go. Oh, I can. I hear myself when I'm editing. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> on this journey okay the seed hall journey and thank you all of you for joining me i do appreciate it quite a lot actually okay first one lavender munstead so this is an herb technically it is an herb i suck at lavender suck okay i'm gonna use the s word i suck at lavender but i'm gonna try because i'm feeling Super confident right now. We're going to do some lavender because I feel like I've grown as a gardener. I've grown in knowledge and skill and ability and confidence. Okay. Um, and these are in no particular order. Okay, I think I already said that. This is a pepper chili, the ancho poblano. I've never grown this in my life. I've had some. I mean, I know what they are. I'm going to tell you. Let's start this right, okay? Excuse me. <laughs> I didn't read you any of the stats. Let's start back. Hi, Munstead Lavender. Okay, the perennial full sun. Um, Munstead was named from Munstead Woods in England, where it was a favorite of renowned garden designer, writer, and artist Gertrude Jekyll. Uh, Munstead flowers earlier than other lavenders and stays compact. English lavenders are preferred for culinary uses and oils. Heat and drought tolerant plants attract pollinators perennial in USDA zones five through nine, which includes me. 
Okay, so this is the one that you want to use for culinary use and for oils. Okay, Munstead Lavender. Sorry for the bumpy intro, but we're in it now. Here we go. So the Ancho Poblano. Isn't that a beautiful pepper? I mean, I'm, I think next, after I collect all my boutique tomatoes, I'm going to have to move on to boutique peppers. It's just a natural, organic progression. Okay, it's just what has to happen. So this Pepper Ancho Poblano can, uh, where's the days of maturity? Uh, 65 to 75 days to maturity. One of the most popular chilies in Mexico, the green three to six inch poblano is most often stuffed with cheese or meat for chili rellanos. Recipe inside the packet. Oh, if I don't know if you already knew this, but inside this botanical interest packet, if you were to undo it, unfold it, and splay it open on the inside, on the interior behind these peppers, there's a whole bunch of other information. It's on every packet. Every packet has a bunch of information if you open up that envelope. I don't know if y'all knew that. So if you, it's there. Okay. Dark reddish brown dried ancho is used in a variety of sauces, such as the traditional mole poblano, 1,000 to 2,000 Scoville heat units, which is mild apparently to the non <laughs> sissy tongue. Anyway. This packet yields approximately 20 plants when started indoors, which means I got 20 seeds in there. Next, Hyacinth Bean Ruby Moon. How gorgeous is that on the wagon arch? Actually, on all the arches. Can I put it on all the arches? I think I should. Uh, grown by Thomas Jefferson at Monticello, Hyacinth Bean is a dazzling ornamental with stunning pinkish purple flowers and shiny dark purple pods that stand out against the purple and green foliage. Twining stems quickly climb a fence or trellis trail across the ground for an attractive ground cover. Interesting option. Wouldn't have thought of that. Um, or spill over container edges. Oh, container. Okay, okay. Um, fairly drought tolerant once established, grown as an annual, although perennial in USDA zones 10 and warmer, which not me. Oh, contains toxins. Hello, contains toxins. Not recommended for eating. This is not an edible. Not. I repeat. Not. And I'm going to lower this a minute because my neck is hurting. Looking up at you. Hold, please. Oh, much better. Man, I was, my neck was hurting. Okay, so this one's exciting. This one's an exciting one. This is Orlea White Lace. Um, I kind of want to do a little bit more cut flowers next year for arranging. I don't want to be like flower farmer. I'm not going to be doing like cut flower, fat flower farming things. I just don't think that's part of my journey. I don't think it is. But this Orlea White Lace looks gorgeous and I know I have a lot of gorgeous roses on the property and when I do my little arrangements with my little roses that'd be a freaking lovely filler if I do say so myself all right so this pure white flowers uh bloom in stunning three to five inch circular groups with strong stems compact bushy habit excellent I do like that look good in the protege um and long bloom period making white lace a great choice for gardens Large and small, simply striking, grown in mass, or intermingled with colorful flowers. Pardon. And is a long-lasting cut flower. Good. The abundant white flowers are followed by equally showy green fruit. Also known as Minoan lace attracts pollinators. Something I can't wait to plant now. We're going to plant some of these now. Look at this. Sugar magnolia. How pretty is that? Um, wow. Look, first word is wow. Wow. Okay, wow. A purple snap pea, tender and delicious. Sugar Magnolia isn't just a famous Grateful Dead song. Well, I didn't know that. I might be 50, but I don't know, I don't know that. Okay. It is also a beautiful, fine flavored edible pod pea with purple flowers. Long hyper tendrils, vigorous multi branching tendrils act as extra sturdy supports for six to seven foot vining plants. Okay, so they get pretty tall, creating an airy structure that helps prevent mildew. 
Some of these open pollinated peas may be speckled with green or be fully green. This packet sows up to six feet, 70 days to maturity. Oh, gosh, those are gorgeous. So, yeah, we're going to get some of those planted post haste. Post haste. It is pea season in southeast Texas. Perfect weather for it. Hopefully, we don't get a crazy freeze. Cross all your fingers and toes. Next is a sweet pepper called Orange Sun. That looks delightful. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have so much color. With these wild tomatoes, pretty hyacinth beans and magnolia peas and lavenders, it's just going to be rainbows. Rainbows and butterflies and sunshine. And happy feelings. Yeah. We all need that. Oh, there's 20 seeds in here. Uh, 75 to 85 days to maturity. So orange sun, it says, expect big things from this large sunny pepper that boasts thick walls with rich sweet flavor. Orange sun turns from green to orange, pick in both stages to boost production and give meals more color. This pepper is so pretty, you may want to put it in a container on a patio. This packet yields approximately 16 plants. That's gorgeous, gorgeous. Next is a lavender, English tall vera. Um, this is the tall, old-fashioned, wonderfully fragrant lavender that is an extremely valuable and easy-to-use household herb. An important ingredient in fragrance sachets, potpourris, an excellent cut and dried flower for arrangements, and a most useful component of innumerable craft projects. A lot of words. A lot of big, those are good words, good words. Drought tolerant, perfect for rock gardens or as a short hedge and a pollinator favorite. Perennial in USDA zone five and warmer, otherwise grown as an annual deer resistant. I'm thinking my lavenders are going to go in pots just because they have special soil needs. Like I'll probably use a cactus soil, like a free draining cactus soil. And I think they want their soils a little more alkaline and less acidic. They want very few nutrients, like kind of poor, rocky, like Mediterranean, sandy, deserty soil, I think. So we'll try to give that to them in pots. First of my double orders is fever few. Why? Of all the things to have double of, this isn't it. This is my first choice for double packets. So one of you lovely viewers may win one if I ever get around to doing anything interesting and fun on this channel. A Victorian garden staple and an herbal remedy for centuries. It's an herb. That's right. It's part of my herbs. Okay. It's part of my herbs. Fairly drought tolerant, unfussy plant with masses of small white flowers on scented ferny foliage. Blooms attract beneficial insects and are great fresh cut or dried flowers. Hmm. Avidly reseeds. So let these volunteers decorate your garden and attract pollinators. Also known as feather few bachelor's or bride's button and midsummer daisy this is not the bachelor's button i'm you know the blue boy and all that stuff this is not that um fever few is used in traditional teas and has a long history of medicinal use perennial in zones five through eight so fever few then oh, oh, oh i'm so excited about this one look at this beautiful celosia called flamingo how pretty is that going to be in arrangements? I know. That's going to look so pretty in the potage too, in the circle bed. Stop your face. Stop your face. Just stop it right now. These intriguing plants add a lovely vertical element to the flower bed or border and make a statement as the focal point of a large container. I could see that. I could see that on the uh, pots on the front porch. This pink with my gray and white double wide mobile home. Hello. Done. Done. Okay. Done. Yeah, that, that's happening. Um, the pretty soft flower spikes are pinkish white, fading to silvery at the base, turning to rosy pink at the tips. Color starts out pale and intensifies throughout the growing season. Four. Also called wheat celosia for the flower's resemblance to a wheat stalk. Excellent cut flowers for fresh or dried arrangements. Heat and drought tolerant. Grown as an annual, although perennial, in USDA zones 10 and warmer. Okay. Excited about that one. Next. 
nasturtium trailing purple emperor yeah okay regal purple emperor boasts deeply veined petals in varying shades of purple that fade into lavender and dusty rose this trailing variety is fairly drought tolerant and would be perfect as a ground cover or in a hanging basket that needs to happen okay that needs to happen um edible blossoms and leaves provide a peppery kick to salads and are a beneficial garnish on desserts hmm. usually grown as an annual perennial in zones 10 and warmer rabbit and deer resistant there you go that's that's gorgeous in a basket yeah yeah okay next <laughs> it's a jalapeno called megatron okay i've been wanting a giant jalapeno did i get any jalapenos last year no because of Peppergate, okay? I grew jalapeno seeds. Like, I didn't even, mine wasn't even the result of buying starts at the store. I had a pack of jalapeno pepper seeds. I don't remember the, I don't know if it was burpee or not. But when I grew those seeds, every single seedling was banana pepper. And I thought I had mislabeled until I figured out, found out about Peppergate. I thought I had mislabeled. And just because I grew banana peppers too. And of course, Bella is going to shake the ding ding camera while I'm telling this very important story. <laughs> anyway, I didn't get any, uh, bottom line, I didn't get any jalapenos this year. None. None. So we got Megatron. Producing extra large, thick walled, flavorful chili peppers that reach four and a half inches long. Megatron lives up to its name. Earlier to harvest than some jalapenos, this variety is quick to produce an abundance of peppers ripe for stuffing, uh, taco stuffed jalapeno recipe inside a packet. Jalapenos are 2,500 to 5,000 Scoville heat units, medium hot. To me, jalapenos are hot, hot. High resistance to bacterial leaf spot, um, races 0-3 and top Tabomo, Tabomo virus? I don't know. Any of those words mean that I just said, anyway, 65 days to maturity. <laughs> Let's drink some more. Mm -hmm. It's been a minute. Oh. Hmm. Dark red blend. It's delicious. So oh, good. Mm -hmm. Winter savory. Never grown it before. Ever. Ever, never. I need to learn how to cook with these things. Like all of my food, doesn't matter if it's chicken, pork, beef, rice. Like I use the same seasoning in everything. So it doesn't matter what I cook, it all it could all be the same. It's all, it tastes exactly the same and we're bored with it. Mr. Smith and I both. Like we, Matt. Yeah. So, winter savory captures the best qualities of many herbs in one. Spicy and peppery with a hint of thyme and mint. Hmm. This complex seasoning is especially delicious in rich savory dishes and attractive ornamental in rock gardens. That's something, that's something new to try. I've never done a rock garden. And borders. It beckons bees and other beneficial insects and is a low maintenance herb that grows well in poor soils. Very good. Excellent container variety. Drought tolerant once established. Perennial in USDA zones 4 through 8. Deer resistant. This packet sows up to 71 feet. So there you go. Winter savory. Next. Okra. Red burgundy. You don't know how many okras I actually got in 8 last year? None. 2023 season? None. Okay. Um, it was a weird year for okra. I don't know if it was too hot, if that's possible, too hot or too dry or too something, but mine just didn't grow. The ones that grew from seed barely grew at all. Um, I think I got a couple off of a baby bubba. Most of my baby bubbas died anyway. It was a bad season. I'm not going to go into a big old long story. I've already been talking 25 minutes and I'm leaving most of this in here because this is, this, we're having a good talk. Okay. It's a good talk. Um, anyway, uh, red burgundy okra, uh, 55 to 60 days to maturity. That's not very long at all. That's actually quite quick. Um, whether you eat okra or not, this plant is worth growing with deep crimson red pods and gorgeous yellow flowers that bees love. The most productive red variety, these plants produce tender six, six, 
six inch long pods that are delicious in soup, gumbo, and stew, or deep fried. Introduced in 1983 and All American Selections winner in 1988, this packet sews up to 34 feet. So there you go. Okay, next is <laughs> next is my other double purchase of something I didn't need double of, and that's summer savory. So we had winter savory. Now we have summer savory. So at least it's an herb. So you herb people who want herbs. We'll see what we can work out. Okay. We'll work out something. I don't know if it's going to be like a giveaway or if it's going to be like a... Anyway, I don't know. And I'm impaired, so I shouldn't make any decisions right now. <laughs> um, savory is primarily a culinary herb used in many dishes, including lentils, beans, chicken and beef, soups, eggplant, stuffing, sausage, sauerkraut, liver, and fish. Very unusual list. Very specific. Uh, fresh savory also adds a delightful flavor to salads. Is an important component of herbs, herbs de Provence. See recipe inside packet. All the hidden goodies are inside the packet, okay? Lay open your packet. Uh, lost my place. And is used in tea to soothe a sore throat. <laughs> tea to soothe your sore throat. I think that's that's good to know. Um, and upset stomachs. It soothes upset stomachs too. So attractive, 18 inch tall, fast maturing plant has flowers ranging in color from white to lavender that attracts bees. Good container variety, deer resistant. This packet sews up to 310 feet. Might want to get some summer savory. Next is chervil. Chervil. Also called French parsley or gourmet's parsley. Chervil is an essential herb of French cooking. Often adds um, this sentence doesn't make sense. Okay, I'm just going to tell you right now. It says chervil is an essential herb of French cooking, often added to fines herbs. I don't know what that means. Botanical interest. Um, though the leaves resemble parsley, they have a distinct yet delicate anise flavor. Ooh. Okay. So maybe tea or something. Um, attracts beneficial insects. The fresh leaves are perfect, mixed with salads, sprinkled on fish or meat, and even added to tomato juice. That is a very odd statement. Um, thrives in cool temperatures. We're gonna, <laughs> that means we're going to start some right now. Uh, heat causes bolting. Great in containers grown as an annual, although biennial, in USDA zone 6 through 9. This packet sews up to 58 feet. Anyway, chervil. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by the chervil. Okay. Good job, me. Good job, me, for picking it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, here's an old favorite, eggplant jewel amethyst. I haven't gotten any. I haven't gotten one yet, although um, I'm ordering more because I gave away some, and I want to make sure that I have some to start in spring. Um, also, I have one in my let pot by the sink in the kitchen, and it is starting to flower. I have little baby flowers on this really big, yet for an eggplant small, but for the let pot kind of big. I'll show you that later. Anyway, I'm talking. Um, I ordered some more just because it's so adorable, and I want to make sure I have some for outdoor pots in spring. So Jewel Amethyst is perfect for containers with a tidy habit that makes harvesting a breeze. Glossy oval purple fruits are best harvested when about three to four and a half inches long. Harvest regularly, three to four and a half inches. That's a big fruit to have in my let pot. Okay, that's fine. Um, harvest regularly this prolific plant and keep eggplant on the table throughout the season. Its firm texture and mild flavor makes this eggplant ideal for roasting, frying, or glazing with a flavorful sauce. Maybe using some of my uh, new herbs. Mm -hmm. I think one of them did mention eggplant. I don't remember which one, but one of them did. Um, see inside packet for our gush. Gochu, gochu chang, gochu chang glazed eggplant recipe. Words are hard. I've, I've heard of gochu chang. <laughs> I've never seen the actual letters written down. That was hard. 
This packet yields approximately nine plants when started indoors, which means I got about nine seeds. Oh, it says 12 seeds. 12 seeds. <laughs> but you only get nine plants. Okay, I don't know how that's possible. But that's, that's seed math. You've heard of girl math, corporate math, all the other mom math. Anyway, <laughs> seed math. You get 12 seeds, makes nine plants. German chamomile. Chamomile, chamomile. So um, in one of my uh, seed halls, a couple seed halls back, I got the Roman chamomile because I'd never tried it before. But someone mentioned or I read or I heard, someone said the German chamomile is the one we want to grow in our area. So I went ahead and got some because I was out. Um, but I'm going to try both, Roman and German. All of them. Uh, what could be more soothing than curling up at bedtime with a good book and a cup of calming chamomile tea? Made fresh from your garden. Mm -hmm. The flowers can also be dried for foil arrangements, pressed for crafts, or woven into charming wreaths. And their edible petals can be tossed into salads. In the garden, chamomile is fairly drought tolerant and attracts beneficial insects and pollinators. Deer resistant. This packet sows up to 210 feet. Hear me, chamomile. Very pretty. Very pretty. Um, also, another one I had to buy more of. Because they don't give you that many and I gave away some and I grew a lot this year and that's the sun gold. Now I don't know if I'm going to grow it next year in 2024 because I have all these other tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I can't grow everything y'all. I just don't have the energy. I don't have the bandwidth. I just, I don't. So we... We may have to have a little, <laughs> a little, um, viewer poll. I might have to, um, do a video where I tell you every tomato variety packet seed that I own. And I want y'all to pick 25 for me to grow. And I just decided this today because it's Gary. Gary with Grow Your Own. Food. Gary had commented on one of my videos, you know, I'm going to have one of tomatoes growing next year. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. And I can't do it. I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to grow every single one of everything I have. I can't do it. But I could let y'all pick 25. I think I did around 23, 25 this year. And that was enough for me to handle personally. So um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Oh, look, we only have two packets. That's it. So, um, this is the Cape Daisy Zulu Prince. How pretty is that? Yeah, it's not edible. I mean, I'm, I'm into all the growings, okay? I'm not just growing things I can eat. Growing things make me happy. And that's edible and non-edible. And herbal, and medicinal, and visual, tactile, scentful. All the things. So, a reliable bloomer, Zulu Prince, will fill the garden with three to four inch flowers above silver tinged foliage, attracting bees, birds, and butterflies from midsummer to fall. Do flowers attract birds? The seeds. Never mind. My brain froze for a minute. I'm like, flowers don't attract birds. They do. They do. Um, also known as Monarch of the Velt. V-E-L-D-T, Monarch of the Velt. It literally says that. Due to its prolific presence on the plains of Southern Africa, this hardy, practically carefree beauty will keep on blooming through summer's heat where other flowers falter. As the sturdy plant thrives in poor soil and hot, dry conditions, I can provide all of those things. Flowers open to greet the sun on sunny days and follow it through the day. And that's pretty. Okay. Well, that's lovely. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. All right. And the last seed packet is the free thank you packet lettuce mescaline. You know, I love my lettuce mixes. I've been planting all kinds of lettuce mixes. I believe um, there's two videos you haven't seen yet that I've already recorded, and I'm getting a lot of lettuce done. We're getting some lettuce done. Anyway, so thank you for my thank you. I love your lettuce mixes, botanical interests. I love them real hard. All right, guys. Well, this video is plenty long enough, plenty long enough, and I apologize a little bit, but not a whole lot because I had fun. I hope you did. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Well, I'm going to keep on drinking. 
and I'm going to edit this up real quick so I can have it released tomorrow morning. Today is Tuesday, December 5th. Hopefully you're watching this Wednesday, December 6th. No guarantees, so no guarantees because I'm, well, I'm tired. But editing starts now. So um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.